Hey guys, welcome back to the next video in our channel. Today we're going to be talking about Maya 2022.1. There is this new version of Maya. If you're using 2022, either an indie education license or the, the full on license, there is Maya 2022.1 dropped a couple of days ago. I've been just checking around. To be honest, I've been uh, flooded with work, so I haven't had a chance to like really go in here. But let's let's take a quick jump and see where, where things are. So here we are. I'm going to go straight to Maya. That's a new thing that's now in 2022.1 where you see like this uh, preview of the worst that you're doing. But I want to show you something very fun that I found. Here in the health option, we have this interactive tutorials. And if we go here into basic skills, there are these new files where you're going to be able to learn certain things about Maya. It's the basics. So if you've taken any of our courses, you probably already know all of this. However, it's fun and it's cool to see how, how people are pushing uh, the Maya software into creating some interesting things. So it's kind of like they gamify a Maya so that you get this uh, little interaction sequence uh, where you learn again the ins and outs. I usually like going into these things even after 10 years of experience because every now and then they show a tool that I'm like, really, that thing existed for a while and I've never noticed and, and you learn something new. So we hit start and we got this little guy here. You can see the animation running down here. It seems to me that the animation is baked, otherwise it wouldn't be running as uh, smooth as it is because there's a lot of things. There's like an HDR and that's reflection. So he's kind of like preparing. There's like a trigger there. Okay, hi, Maya bot. This gateway way to create whatever you desire. Yeah, we know that. We know that, right, guys? <laughs> That's the ship from uh, a couple of years ago when they were doing the Bifrost things. That's the ogre as well. Very, very common. It's not a bad walk cycle, to be honest. It's pretty good. Okay, it's a little bit heavy. You can see my computer is struggling a little bit because it's loading everything in real time. So yeah, that's uh, that's something. Okay, so yeah, okay, yeah, the basic stuff. So you're gonna learn how to do the camera thing. You're gonna learn how to, what would you wanna? Uh, oh, look at the horizon. Okay, there we go. Cool. So yeah, a lot of things. I'm just gonna go into a new scene now. Uh, I don't think we need to go over the basics, but very cool tool for you guys. So if you wanna check it out, it's again here in the help, interactive tutorial, basic skills. Remember, every time Maya gets a new version, you're gonna get this like green uh, brackets telling you what's new. And this is the next thing I wanna show you. Very, very cool thing, to be honest. I think it's uh, way overdue, which is the control F is the shortcut, it's the find tool. So. Every single time I'm teaching a class, I am like, okay, guys, you're gonna like grab your sphere and uh, you're gonna grab your cut tool. And people are like, where's the cut tool? Well, if you don't know that this one right here is the, is the, is the cut tool that we're gonna be using, then you're gonna spend a long time trying to find it if you can't remember in which men menu it is. Of course, with time, you, you kind of remember that, uh, yeah, it's right here. But the cool thing is you just press Control F, you say cut tool, and you're gonna find it here, multi-cut. So there you go, like very, very easy. It's kind of like a quick access, not only if you don't know what the tool is, if you just wanna like very quickly navigate, for instance, there's this tool that I uh, quite often use, which is the Benth tool, to, as the name implies, uh, Benth uh, objects. So instead of going deform, nonlinear, bend, which is like three clicks, I can just press Control F, right bend, and it's gonna be right there. So <laughs> very, very handy. Another one that I sometimes use is the editable motion trails that's in, in animation. So like if you have a, an object here and then let's say we move it here and then we move it all the way here and you wanna see how this thing moves through time, you can use something called a motion trail. You select the object, you go modeling, animation, visualize, editable motion trail, and you're gonna get like how this object is moving from one point to the other, right? So very, very handy. The problem is you need to go out of modeling and into animation to access that. Not anymore. <laughs> if you need it, you can just like control F, grab the object, control F, and just write motion trail, and there it is. Super, super, super handy. Like it's, it's one of the best tools that Maya has uh, implemented in the last couple of years, to be honest. And it's such a simple tool, but it's gonna make things so much easier. So now, anytime that you are like, hey, I can't find the tool, like the teacher or the instructor said, hey, use this tool or this other tool, just control F and just write the thing and you're gonna get, you're gonna get there. 
And not only that, this this uh, fine thing actually has some interesting things. I, I did a little bit of research and uh, there's a, a couple of very interesting things. So let me let me open a recent file here. Let me open this. Uh, where's the wraith? Okay, let's do the zombie. So this is this is one of the uh, it's, a, it's a character of mine and uh, we use this to teach rigging in one of the universities that I teach at. If you guys want to learn rigging, leave us down in the comments. If we see enough interest, we'll be happy to make something for you guys. So um, sometimes you are trying to do certain things. And if you take a look here, like there's a lot of things here. Like let's say I want to select the pinky or the, the, the left pinky bone, which is like this one right here. But maybe I'm working on something over here and I just want to select that pinky finger because I need it, but I can't find it. You can say control F and then click here on the little element and go into select. And now I'm going to look for pink and all of the elements that land or, or fall into the pink category. I actually messed up, but it should be <laughs> named pinky, but all of the elements that have that name are going to be here. So instead of having to look them up here on the outliner, you can very quickly look them up right here. And I can very quickly select the bone that I'm looking for and be like, okay, let's just check. Yeah, it's working. It's intended. And, and you keep going. So very, very, very easy, easy or, or cool thing to do. Like, again, if you have like a really complex scene with a lot of elements, some of you might have seen our, what was it? The modeling a realistic environment, I believe from from last year and we have a lot of props like walls and and tables and uh, floors and uh, like the air conditioners and stuff and maybe you want to like quickly navigate to something control f and as long this is why it's very important to keep your outliner clean as long as your outliner is very nicely organized you're going to be able to find the thing for those advanced users you can also go into python and you can search for uh commands from python so for instance um well actually i don't know python so <laughs> i'm not gonna be able to remember one but i do know mail so we have the uh parent constraint for instance so if i say parent here we go that's the parent constraint if i click it you're gonna see that of course i get an error error because I, i'm not selecting anything but i could grab like one object two objects and if i select one, then the other, control F, and just right here, parent. This is gonna parent one to the other. Now that's a very simple thing. You can just press P, but uh, the example I think is very obvious. The fact that you can look for commands as well. So very, very handy. So control F is gonna be your new shortcut, guys. You're you're gonna love this one. It's, it's very, very cool. Now I'm gonna show you, and I'm just gonna very briefly touch on this tool because it's again, very, very cool. Uh, and later on, maybe we'll do a, a more in-depth video on, on how, how, how deep we can go on the on the tool and that is the new uh, mesh curve tool where is it well th this is no not new on this version it was new from 2022 I haven't used it that much to be honest but it's really really cool where is it though you can find it I know that we need curves, so I'm just going to draw like a curve here. You see the... No, it's not. A... I don't think it's a curve selection. Well, if I don't know, I can do Control F, remember? And uh, curve... Curve warp. Was it curve warp? No, it's not a curve warp. Uh, it's not project curve. Let me quickly check. I, I, I forgot the name. So Maya 2022 curve. Uh, sweep mesh. That's the name. Sweep mesh. There we go. So control F. Let's say sweep mesh. You see the plugin? It seems like it's a plugin. Oh, wait. No, I'm looking for things that are not. Sweep. Maybe it is a plugin. That's why I'm not seeing it. Is it though? Weird. Let's look at it. Oh, it is there. So where is it? Sweep. Is that the animated sweep? Seems like that's the one, is it? No, that's a loft. It's very weird. I can't find it. Give me just one second. 
Where is it though? Huh. Create. Oh, there it is. There it is. So sweep mesh. It's a it's a it's a different kind of element. That's why I couldn't find it. Sorry, sorry for that. I'm learning as, as well as you remember, always learning, always improving, right? So there we go. We create a curve and now we just select the curve. We go into edit or sorry, create sweep mesh. And what this thing is going to do is it will automatically sweep a surface, in this case, a poly um, poly element, which is this sort of like a eight sided uh, thing through the through the curve very, very nicely. Now, if you increase the precision of the thing, it will follow very, very closely to the shape of the curve. See how we had like this very weird band over here. Now, of course, this is a little bit too intense. So we can press this option called optimize and it will remove all of the things where it says that it doesn't need as many. And we can lower the precision just a little bit to like, I don't know, 95, I think. That should give us a, a nice uh, distribution here. And the cool thing about this is that at any point we can change the shape of this element. So for, for instance, right now we're using this uh, sides element with this uh, circle thing. So if we go to four, we're gonna get this very sharp line. If we go to like 10, it's gonna be really, really soft. Uh, we can change to a rectangle to get like a little bit of a bevel. So this tool is really, really cool, especially if you have like something, let, let, let's do an exercise real quick. Let's, let's go, I think I have, uh, uh, yeah, this one. Yeah, we have this uh, like crane. I also use this one to teach, uh, what's the word, rigging. So let's say I want to add a cable that goes from like down here all the way like through the through the things here, through the uh, arms, and then all the way like to the little handles. So I would go with my like draw. I can just like very quickly draw like a cable, be like, okay, this guy's going to be like this, this, going to go up there, and there we go. And you can see that that curve is nicely there. I'm just going to go into control vertice. Grab this. Oh. Let's turn off bones so that we don't grab the bones. I'm gonna press B to go into soft selection so that the cable moves in a soft way, like this. Let's decrease the influence. There we go. Let's say it goes out like in this section. I don't know why. It's just it just looks cool, right? So, so something like this. So now I can just grab that curve going to create sweep mesh and it will create the sweep mesh uh, automatically. Now, of course we can change the scale. So this looks more like a, like a cable. Look at that. We increase the precision. Of course, it's going to become softer. Very nice. And not only that, we can actually change the profile of this thing, which was one of the things that I saw. So let's say I model like a different sort of like cable. I can grab, I can grab this P cube going to my sweep mesh and change this to costume. It's going to be a poly object and I'm going to select this guy right here. So I'm going to say, oh, sorry. So sweep, sweep, costume, select, uh, uh, poly object, select. Okay. And now, yeah, there we go. So now let's, is it working? Did I mess up? Let me go back here, see if this works now. Okay, let me no, let me delete the sweep. Let's start again, so grab the, the curve, cancel, grab the curve, create, let's sweep this thing, there we go. Now let's go costume, poly object, this guy right here and hit okay. Ha, huh, that's weird. Technically it should give us the, the sweep mesh with this thing. Well, I'm not seeing it. Hmm, weird. I'll check that out. As I mentioned, I wanna I wanna really jump into this tool like with a little bit more time because I don't want this video to be super super long. So I'll jump back and I'll show you. But right now, like as you can see, very quickly we can create like this sort of things. And one of the cool things I, I did saw this on my very brief research is we can grab like several curves, and you can select all of the curves at the same time create the sweep mesh for all of them. And they're going to be sharing this sort of like instance thing. So, so now we can control, like imagine if we created like 20 or 30 different cables going around an object, and then we just want everything to be solid, like a mesh very easily. We can do it with, uh, with the mesh controls. So 
Maya 2021, 2022.1, guys. Very uh, substantial uh, changes. There's a couple more things. We'll talk about them later. But so far, like one of the best ones, as I mentioned, Control F, your your find command. Very cool. And here, of course, the quick tour and the interactive tutorials. Very, very nice as well. So, yeah, leave us in the comments if you want to see any specific tool so that I can research it and show it to you guys, of course, how you can apply it and how we can use it on, on specific projects. And make sure, make sure to come back tomorrow, Saturday, because we're going to be talking about the topic that a lot of you have been asking about. Money, 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 money. So <laughs> we're going to be talking about how much a 3D artist make. It's a, it's a very nice video that we've prepared for you guys. So make sure to come back tomorrow. Give us a like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.